Hi, Internet. This is Peter. I love Russia. I love Russian music. I love Russian food. I love Russian literature. I love Russian women. I love Stravinsky and Tchaikovsky and Rachmaninoff and Tolstoy and Dostoevsky and Bulgakov and Knish and Stroganov and Goulash. I love all that stuff. I love Russian hockey players. I love Russia so much that I've lobbied to get our website named after one of them. So please take all that into consideration before we get started. Since the fall of the Soviet Union, Russian culture and specifically the Russian government have been dominated by the Russian Orthodox Church or ROC, a pretty conservative organization with lots of rules about how society should be structured. So despite decriminalizing homosexuality in 1993, anti-gay sentiment in Russia is very high, and that sentiment is law. Russia voted to ban, quote, propaganda of non-traditional sexual relations and relations which are not conducive to procreation. And as far as I can tell, that law does not apply to either postmenopausal women, infertile men, or third base. It's really just gay guys. It's the same moral panic we've seen throughout history, hate as an engine of political power, a naked exploitation of that understandable human desire to feel like you're okay because you're not as rotten as somebody else. And for the record, that same desire is manifested in American attitudes of cultural superiority over Russia and like everybody else. Normally this issue would be locked away in the domain of politics or human rights and kept far away from the domain of sports, but yet, the Sochi Olympics have changed that. In recent days, hockey players have been asked about their opinions on Russia's anti-gay laws. Washington's own Braden Holpe said, It's hard to go into a country that supports something like that. As athletes, we have to find a way to make sure we can use it to our advantage. Gay rights especially, but human rights, to move it forward. Known vampire Sidney Crosby says, I think everyone has an equal right to play, and I think we've been supporting that. Those laws are something. I don't agree with it personally. Longtime NHL babyface and undeserving Selkie winner Pavel Datsuk says, I'm an Orthodox, and that says it all. Actually, that doesn't say it all, so I'll tell you what the Russian Orthodox Church has to say about it. Quoting the head of the Russian Orthodox Church, This is a very dangerous apocalyptic symptom, and we must do everything in our powers to ensure that sin is never sanctioned in Russia by state law, because that would mean the nation has embarked on a path of self-destruction. Lady Bing. Recent defector Ilya Kovalchuk says, I agree, of course. I'm Russian, and we all have to respect that. It's personal. And like I said, it's a free world, but that's our line. That's our country. So everybody has to respect that. Which is frankly untrue. We don't have to respect one another's opinions. We have to acknowledge them. For example, I have the opinion that all seafood is gross and disgusting. And while you must now acknowledge that, you are not required to respect that. Especially if you are a fisherman. And it's worth noting that the thing that Kovalchuk is asking us to respect is the Kremlin and Russian Orthodox Church's tacit approval and implicit permission for gangs to beat up homosexual people in the street. And finally, the captain of the Washington Capitals, Alex Ovechkin, our job is to play. I'd rather speak about that. I understand Alex Ovechkin's opinion, I really do. He lives in two worlds. The same opinion could earn praise in one world and criminal prosecution in the other. Being neutral, being agnostic, being Switzerland, is absolutely the most pragmatic thing he could do right now. And I do not know his politics at all, but I do know that the best predictor of a tolerant attitude towards gay people is a personal relationship with a gay person. Since January of 2010, Alex Ovechkin's been captain of 51 Capitals teammates. Going by conservative estimates for the incidence of gay identification, he's probably been the leader for a gay player. And even if he weren't, he played against 209 opponents last year, seven of whom probably identify as gay. Leadership means making friends, building coalitions, supporting one another in the pursuit of a common goal. Ovechkin has received tons of criticism for his leadership in the past, despite being one of the better passers in the league. But that job requires two things that Alex Ovechkin certainly has, charisma and intelligence, as well as a third, bravery. The bravest and most leaderific thing Ovi could do is become the first Russian player to cut a video for the You Can Play project. The You Can Play project has a very specific, very limited goal. Open up hockey to everyone who can play. It's the same policy that gave us Elton John and Freddie Mercury and David Bowie and other people who were not rock musicians from the 1970s probably. And that's a joke, but this is a serious issue. For people on one side of this argument, it's a political issue. It's a public decency issue. For everyone else, it's a human rights issue. Because, yeah, the R in RMNB has a problem with gay people and women and Jewish people. Not that America doesn't have problems as well, but we avow them and we're working on them. So, yeah, I completely understand why Alex Ovechkin gave the non-controversial answer there. But I would prefer it if he were a leader. A leader is a person that doesn't just tell us how great the past was. A leader is a person that tells us what the future can be. And in this case, the future is a place where everyone, in the spirit of goodwill, can pursue their goals. And goals lead to Stanley Cups. Free Pussy Riot.